Welcome to Wind Down with Daniel and Patrice. So with Wind Down, we're going to bring you today's topics about family, relationships, just the beauty of love and life. We'll probably do some music. We're going to always have a drink and a cocktail prepared and ready to go. But the objective is to just give you a sneak peek of what connects us. And that's moments like this when we wind down at the end of the night. And we just talk shit and have a good time. Every fucking day. Yeah, yeah. Not every fucking day. Because that right. would be a little excessive. That I sounds mean, alcoholic. It does. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds alcoholic. I apologize for that. <laughs> Not every day. But um, at least on the weekends, we do tend to wind down. We do. Happy yeah. Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you too, baby. Did you have a good time? I actually did. I actually did. We normally don't even celebrate Valentine's Day. Not at all, really. But this year, we just ended up at the bar. Absolutely. Y'all house. Y'all house. Y'all house. That show was kind of cool, too. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed um, Y'all house. That's my second time going. And... The drinks, the atmosphere, it's like really chilled and comfortable. Yeah, we had a Hennessy uh, sangria. sangria. <laughs> if anything, if you know, we love Pinot Noir. First of all, <laughs> and then they first just, of all, go just throw a splash of Hennessy. You throw in some Hennessy and some fruit with an orange. On top of the Pinot Noir. Come on, man, nigga. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Happy Day. Happy Valentine's Day to me. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It, it was, was good. good. But you know what I noticed, though? Is this in Annapolis Mall. Uh-huh. No, not Annapolis Mall. Arundel Mall. You always Mall. do that. I don't know why. Because it's A's. I guess so. Two totally different places. That's well, we made it to Arundel Mills Mall. Yes. And I'll tell you what, that bitch was wild. Listen, uh, COVID, what? It was not a pandemic happening hey. at Anne Arundel, like at all. It was so many people walking <laughs> around. There was no capacity. Like it was, it was, it, it was, was insane. It was, that shit was like, you take your chances in life. Literally, <laughs> take your chances in life. Literally, and you know what I realized? <laughs> Anytime I'm out in public, it's always one person that be walking around without a mask. Oh, yeah. they Trump supporters. Trump supporters, and you know don't fuck with them. They ain't got shit to lose. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, why you... It's just the, it's just the instigating stance. Because you're waiting for somebody you to say... Why you waiting for somebody? Have a mask on? You're waiting for it. But anyway, so yeah, how did you... So yeah, this year, Valentine's Day, we did decide to do some um, something. You have, it made me get out the house. I hadn't been out in a minute. Yeah, man. What the fuck? You quarantine no, like shit. Actually, no. The last time I went out was to drop Destiny off at the airport. So. Yeah, like the only time you go out is when you got a task. You like, you got to go out to take your grandfather somewhere. You got to go out to do something for your grandmother. You got to go out to take the girls to work or me to work or go always go on tasks. Right. <coughs> but you know the reason why. COVID, bless you, bless you. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> Where did that random ass sneeze come from? <laughs> what the fuck made you sneeze? Because we talk about nose out and shit. <laughs> I, I don't think like you... a little ass kid. It's like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, but no, I, I, the reason why I don't go out right now, this is my hibernation season. It's winter. It's cold as fuck outside. <laughs> yeah. Why am I missing, like, why am I going outside for anything else but to do tasks? 100% it's cold. In the no, that's not 100% your truth because you're going out to do anything. I'll still be running. <laughs> <laughs> you be like, you running today? How much degrees is it? 36? All oh. right, do your thing, buddy. As long as it's not below freezing. I can't run below freezing because the ground gets slippery. Really? Yeah, the dew freezes on the on the pavement, so you can't get a good grip. <laughs> Tell me the lesson you had to learn. Oh to man, know I, that. <laughs> Tell me hey, lesson. listen, uh, man, I almost got hit by a car one morning. <laughs> couldn't stop. I was going downhill, couldn't stop, and that shit was like show, like a real fucking like my feet. You I were was, skating? Yeah. Yep. Wow. So I don't run when it's under 32 because the dude freezes against the pavement. When you probably run, you probably know that. I had to figure out the hard way. It's okay. <laughs> we all have to learn our own lessons. 
So let's get to the business at hand. Mm -hmm. The business at hand is that um we are going Critiquing? to review. I don't want to say critique. We ain't no critics. I'm not a critic. Um, I'm just going to, I just say review and review. give our opinion. Our opinion mm -hmm. on how we felt about these two movies. And the two movies are Malcolm and Marie. Mal oh, yeah, yeah. And Judas and the Black Messiah. Mm. That was two real good movies. That was. It was like in the last two weeks. Netflix is So like going back to thing. back weekends, we had yeah. real good movies to watch. Netflix is really out here like like promoting black excellence. Yeah, yeah. They're, like, but it's not even because of Black History BET. Month because Netflix has a lot of black presence. Yeah. So. And they have more variety. Like BET should be ashamed of themselves because it's just like... BET probably had a the? budget to buy the movies though. <sighs> Um, so, Michael mm -hmm. and Marie, mm. how did you feel about the movie? Well, let's give context to the movie. Yes. So, Malcolm and Marie was about mm -hmm. a young couple mm -hmm. that has a history of some trauma within their relationship that needs healing. Mm -hmm. The young gentleman received an award for the movie that he wrote and produced. It was a premiere. It was a premiere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, he got all these accolades mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of uh, good praise for the movie that mm -hmm. was produced. Mm -hmm. And the scene is at the house that they were at mm -hmm. after the movie premiere happened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's one o'clock in the morning when they get mm -hmm. home. He's excited. He's kissing her ass, literally. Mm -hmm. Wants some macaroni and cheese out the box. <laughs> Most random <laughs> movie <laughs> premiere midnight meal ever. He probably had a mushroom seared ahi, mahi tuna and came home. I would have much rather they had made oodles and noodles than craft macaroni and cheese. Hey, out the box. Out the box? Not even Stouffer's, dog. That is the... No, okay. It's not the worst. Because I remember when I was in college, mm -hmm. when we was at Virginia State, and we had the little portable... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's yeah, that joint yeah. called? Little portable kitchen. Yeah, little portable uh, little, little cooker. Little rice maker. Little yes, rice maker. and we used to put the macaroni and cheese in there Thought and buy the microwavable uh, chicken, <laughs> fried chicken that you could pop in the microwave from Walmart. Thought you couldn't tell that shit. It. And then we had the glory greens. Yeah. Motherfucker, we was having Sunday dinner. In the door. Yes, with that crab. So, yeah. So, okay, 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 okay. I can see how crab okay. macaroni Flash and cheese. Back. Yeah, it, it's nostalgic. I can see. Okay. That's why he probably That's did. probably why. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let it go. Okay. So, that's why he, so he got the macaroni mm -hmm. and cheese. And you can clearly see that there's something wrong with his girl. Yeah, it was a lot of tension. But he's asking her what's wrong. Mm -hmm. And she says nothing uh -huh. at first. Mm -hmm. And then she tells him, anything that we are going to say after this moment is not going to be good. <laughs> so let's just not oh. talk about it. But he was persistent. Like most of us are, and wanted to know what's what wrong. wrong with you. Yes, <laughs> as if we could solve it. And that, from that moment, mm -hmm. vroom, downhill from here, man. So let me ask you a question. All right. How many times uh -huh. in our life have I said, <laughs> "Not today." Not right now. It's not worth talking about at this moment. <laughs> when I saw that joint, <laughs> I felt like the biggest asshole uh -huh. in the Western uh -huh. world. The Western world. In the East, all the men are chauvinists and they don't give a fuck. Okay. They wouldn't even ask what's wrong. Yeah, they were like. Yeah, it wasn't even, it wasn't even <laughs> a need to ask why you have emotions. <laughs> you don't even have emotions. Yeah, you shouldn't. You're a woman. <laughs> You're here to serve. So in the Western world, 
Woo, reel it in. How many times have I asked you to, oh, how many times have I said to you, now is not the time? Endless. <laughs> Infinity. Times two. About how many times do you think you let that slide? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Who the fuck? What? I need to know. Ah, damn. When I saw that motherfucking movie, <laughs> I was... <laughs> Hey, see, I was sitting there watching that movie like, ooh, I know exactly what he's about to do. <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, and even when she tried to, she tried to explain, like, this is what the problem is. I just wish she would have said thank you. And instead of him responding with care and being like, I'm so sorry, baby. It was the worst mistake ever to not thank you. I mean, maybe I could go on social media and do a blast and be like, shit, you know, the, I forgot to thank the most important person. But it was an honest But no, no, no. It listen, was an no, honest, listen, listen to what I'm uh, saying. Of course. Even if he would have said that and even if he would have came up to her and said, you know, I couldn't have done this without you and kissed her again. You think that would have went away? Yes. I don't think it would have went away. It most definitely would have. You know why? It you know went why away? it no, didn't I'm go not, away? Why didn't it go away? Because he turned around and went the fuck off. Why ask me what my problem is if you but, don't want to hear the answer? Because it was his night. It was his night. It could have still been your night. Yeah, but he made an honest mistake. That is fine, and he could have said that while he was kissing all over her face. Yeah. And going back down. He was all down in her vagina and shit before. He could have been like, I'm sorry. Is there a way that I could fucking uh, tell you I'm sorry? Let me spell sorry on your clitoris. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, what? He could have. He could have did that. And I could guarantee you the night would have not gone that way. By spell spelling. With his tongue. <laughs> mm -hmm. S. La, la, la. S. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Yes. <laughs> it could have been okay. I'm going to apologize and say I'm sorry. <laughs> hey. He could have. You put your stupid ass here. <laughs> but he could have did that. But instead, he was so far into himself. <laughs> he just wanted to know what's wrong. But I told you. But this is what I'm telling you why that wouldn't have worked, what you said. It wouldn't have worked because that was so much underneath it that even if it wasn't that, something else, they that shit was just deep-rooted trauma within a relationship, and it all came up to surface in one night. No, this is the problem that we run into all the time. I am telling you from a woman's perspective okay. that that would have worked. It would have worked. I'm telling you. you you're you telling me. I'm telling you from a man. All right, I'll listen but to your But I'm telling you before. as a man what to do. You're telling me as a man. I'm telling you as a woman what, you want. what a woman wants. So what, does, so what I, does a woman I want? I just what explained you just it to you. Okay. You could have came over to me, mm -hmm. could have told me how apologetic you were again. And again. said, yes, again, said that, you know, it was one of the worst mistakes I've ever made in my life. And I don't ever want you to feel like you're, you're not, you're, I'm not thankful for what you've done in my, in this relationship. And proceeded to kiss all over me again. And spell spell sorry, sorry on my vagina. And then the night would have been over. But that wouldn't have made a movie. But no, but that's, but. <laughs> but duh, it's a movie. I'm trying to... But you saying for a future reference. Yeah. Say no more. <laughs> I'm just saying I'll to that. for a future reference, that's how that could have worked. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, yeah, it was it was a lot. I do understand though, like I, I felt when I saw her her um attitude, I said to myself, no. I was like, not tonight. Not tonight. Don't don't do this tonight because it was his day. 
-hmm. And I was like, not tonight. You could address this tomorrow or like later on in the week, but don't don't do his night like this. Yeah, that's what I felt. I felt like sometimes you just gotta you just, you can let it slide. Like we can talk about this shit in the morning. Like bask in your glory, mm -hmm. have your nostalgic moment, eat your macaroni and cheese. And just feel good about yourself. Like, you fucking made it. Like, but I have some shit I need to address as well. Yeah. But going back to what you were saying, I think it was so many other things, like you said, going on within the relationship mm -hmm. that that was the reason why she couldn't let it go. Yeah. And that's the reason why he, he came at her that way. Yeah. Because not only was she mad about the not sorry, she was also mad because she was like, why didn't you cast me? Yeah, man. She actually was a good actor because it was a scene where she acted and acted. Nigga, I was like, she the, the bitch is out. about to kill herself. <laughs> the movie is going to end with her killing and herself. She pulled the knife out. I was like, oh my God. He was like, <laughs> oh, so you going to die tonight on my movie premiere night? This is why I should have been part of the movie. When she did that, I was like, bitch. <laughs> bitch. Zendaya acted her ass off. But here's the problem, though. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem. And he made a very, very good point. Okay. He said, you told me you didn't want to act no more. Mm -hmm. And so because you said that, I honored what you said. And didn't try to cast you. Yep. Yeah. So that's sometimes what she sounded like she had a issue that she was dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's a fucking un uninhibited sneeze <laughs> now <I'm> uninhibited. <laughs> anyway this is exactly how it looks to start getting COVID <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> oh shit but yeah she she did not tell him. She said to him, like, I don't want to want to act no more. And he honored that. Right. But it's like, it's it's one of those things that we always get into it about both of us. Mm -hmm. Both of us believe that the other person is a mind reader. Mm. We both do it. So me and you do that. Yeah. Well, oh, time. my God. Why the fuck you don't understand? Like, what do you, like, I don't understand why I have to explain why this. Why you don't understand what's not in my head? Was not in your head. You know what the hell I meant. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm saying? You know what the fuck I meant. You and my guy. <laughs> in real time. Was <laughs> not in your head. But you the words, I mean. the right words, wasn't in your head. <laughs> but yeah, that that happens. Uh -huh. That happens a lot. Where it's like the expectation. Of like you should know me by now, right? And you should know when I either need a push. You should know when I need words of encouragement. Mm -hmm. You should know when you got to throw me into a fire. But that's just too much pressure on people. Right, right, right. <laughs> My reading shit, like get the fuck out. But okay, that was that, mm -hmm. and I understand that you were saying that. But she all she did try to kind of pull back. Pull back from like so you said. Not tonight, baby. She tried a few times. Yeah. Like, she even got in the bathtub. Yeah. And that nigga just was like... Yeah. But that was after she was trying to talk to him. Mm -hmm. And when she realized that she was just hitting up against a brick wall. And it literally was going nowhere. Right. That's when she was like, you know what? I'm just going to go lay in the tub. Yeah. And I'm going to simmer down. Mm. And this motherfucker... How did you feel about the bathroom scene? Oh, man. I feel like um, not the insults, mm -hmm. but that is a depiction of my life. You nor Kaylin here respect my bathroom time. Hold on, wait. I don't be like. I just said not the insults. Oh, I literally oh, okay. said that. Oh, I about to say what the I hell? I literally said. I respect not, your bathroom time. You do not. You just started. And the only reason why you started respecting my bad time is when I walked in on your ass taking a bath. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to do that. 
Normally, I give you your time. <laughs> you need a whole hour and a half to get in your little tug, get your little eucalyptic shit going, <laughs> candles burning, incense burning and Go shit. Ahead. Got your music on, watching a little podcast. And then oh. you like red run on your phone, texting niggas <laughs> and shit. Like, yeah, so I, 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 I let you have your moment because I'll be upstairs probably watching TV or something like that. And then I realized, or oh, working. Then I realized that anytime I'm in the bathroom, you, Kayla, and Kiara are always in there. Like, literally, always in the bathroom. Like, hey, hey, what you, uh, what you doing? Bitch, I'm peeing. Like, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying narrative. to fucking... It's a false narrative. I mean... Literally. Li I, first of all, after I walked in on your ass, <laughs> and you looked at me like, bitch, this is my quiet time. <laughs> and I said, nigga, fuck you, because you don't respect my time. I'm tired of fucking... I, oh, <laughs> for real? Yeah, convenience in your ass. Oh. No. I said, this is how I feel. Right? <laughs> So then after that, that's when you realize this is not a good feeling. And oh. I'm sorry that I've been doing this. So remember the other day. So you just go and put that shit out there. Huh? Uh huh. So remember <laughs> the other day when um when you was about to come into the bathroom mm. on me, you was like, Treese, you like, no my I let you have your time. I let you have your time in the bathroom. Right? And you backed off, right? Hey. Then who came downstairs right after you? Yeah. Ma, ma. <laughs> Opens the bathroom door. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> Who the fuck thinks you need private time around here? Shit. I leave all y'all niggas alone. I ain't walking in on nobody. I'm not disturbing y'all. I leave y'all niggas alone, but y'all do not leave me alone. Why you keep bringing up old shit? It was like a month ago. <laughs> it's about a month ago. <laughs> You keep bringing up old shit. It was literally about a month ago. Yeah, but yeah, so that movie, man, that bathroom scene, though, he he, he told her about, the, he, that's when he told her it wasn't all about you. Because mm -hmm. the, the problem mm -hmm. was, it wasn't just the thank you. Mm -hmm. The problem was, she said, you, how could you not thank me? Mm -hmm. And you thanked all them other people. Mm -hmm. And I was the one that the movie was based mm -hmm. on. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's where the real anger came from. from uh -huh, uh -huh. That's why I said, if no matter what he would have said, the fact that he forgot to thank her, that shit was in her. Mm -hmm. It don't matter. It would have still happened. I think that he could have definitely smoothed it over. He could have smoothed it over by giving her producer credits. Look at how she acted. You think she was smoothed over worthy? I mean, like, how you think, she acted? You think she had the ability to smooth over? Yes. Man, neither one of them did. She Neither one of them did. I think um, out of the both of them that had the ability to kind of relax and let it go a little bit, it was definitely her more than him. I don't know, man. I, that's what I do think. I do feel like I get his point. It was weird because while he was so fucking rude and so disrespectful in that bathroom telling her about all those women, I kind of got his point. Point. And why was that? I got his point because I feel like, so this is the part that kind of, I think, belongs with that the bathroom scene is the fact that she was on abused drugs. So, and she was on drugs. Yeah. And so... Because the movie was about, mm -hmm. the movie was about mm -hmm. a woman getting over mm -hmm. drug, um, her drug addiction mm -hmm. and... The trials and tribulations yeah. of a woman battling drugs. Yeah, and so the thing is, is that a lot of times, and that was her life. They, yeah, a lot of times when people are on <laughs> drugs, they're very selfish. Like their only thought process is getting high. Everything is about them trying to get high and people trying to stop them from getting high. So I felt like at that moment when he was giving that, telling her all those things, he was like, "I'm just sick of you always thinking." Everything is about fucking you. That's what I felt like he was trying to say in that moment. Like, he was fed up because he was the one that was there while she kicked the habit. Remember, he was like, you cheated on you cheated on me. I stayed with you. And I'm just tired of, like, it seems like the first couple of years of their relationship was all about her getting off of drugs. 
and healing through that. So I think he felt like this was my time. Mm -hmm. And in my time, mm -hmm. you again made it about you. Right, because... Everybody's saying he's a narcissist, but she's a she narcissist sure too. She sure is. She They're sure both is. narcissists. She sure is. They're uh, both narcissists. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why she's a narcissist. Yeah. Because, yeah. and this is why that bathroom scene, mm -hmm. though it looked fucking harsh, mm -hmm. she's a narcissist uh -huh. because you're not. Now, I spoke about him too and the type of women he dealt with. Oh, I'll get back to that. I <laughs> definitely won't circle back around to that. But, <laughs> but what he said was basically like, the nerve of, I I wrote this movie and yes you're my woman and you played a significant role probably the biggest significant yeah. role in me putting this together yeah but don't get it confused uh -huh. I still had a life and I had things that I had to pull from all over this yeah. is my artistry yeah 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 so like I got some shit from this chick over yeah. here damn I'm He's, then he had to say, I smashed her. And, this and, and then he still got the photos. Yeah, and I, then this chick over here. My and nigga. It's like, and then this, so you ain't the only one. Yeah. So, like, her wanting that thanks is almost like that had to stab her. But it also was like, nigga, what type of bitch do you be? Where do you be nigga. finding these bitches at? So, first of all, <laughs> you fucking save a whole ass nigga. Yeah, you find a bitch like, a, a nigga. Skid row. He right, skid you gonna row. skid row like I'm looking for a girlfriend. Her. <laughs> like, bitch, what the fuck you on the AA meetings? Like, you going to all the... outside the AA meetings. Literally the picking sex, up bitches, sex, sex anonymous. <laughs> like, what the fuck, nigga? Like, outside the abortion clinics? Like, nigga, what are you doing? Your womb who gonna be healed in both. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Like, what is what is up with weirdo. you and the kind of women that you decided? Like, it, it it didn't make any sense the amount of women that he had to pull from that were lunatics like her. <laughs> Let me ask you another question. <laughs> but here we go talk about the other movie. Let's talk I'm about almost movie. certain that she's going to say something else. Who do you think is more emotional, men or women? Who do I think is more emotional? Mm -hmm. Definitely women. 100%. Why do you think women are more emotional than men when women can actually stick through somebody cheating on them? But as soon as a man gets cheated on, it's literally nothing that he can, like, it's just a whole blockage and the relationship is over. That's not always the case. That is the case for the majority of men out here. Well, speaking on this movie, he stayed with her through all that shit. He did stay with her, but look at how he stayed with her in order to hold it over top of her head. I think he held it over top of her head because of the circumstances of that night. I don't know if he always held it over top of her head. It sounded like it rolled off his tongue like this was always a go-to point in <laughs> arguments. Well, maybe he never forgave her. I don't think he did. I don't think he forgave her. I think it was a lot of resentment. I think he resented the time that he spent um, helping her get herself together. I think he then thought that she owed, I think he thought she owed him the time that he spent going through producing the movie and directing the movie. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're not doing things in love, there's always going to be resentment. Because sometimes you, sometimes there's 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 just a seek a point in life where sometimes you do have to hold someone up while they're going through something okay. and hold the emotional like lane steady because like for instance when you were studying for the tech tech, tech exam, right. you know your focus was singularly on studying for the tech exam. So the con so. In certain areas, you didn't have the patience or or the desire to communicate effectively because your focus was on this big promotion. Well, that's the same thing I felt with you when you were studying for the life insurance exam, the life and health exam. Your focus was there. We were sitting right here watching. Mm -hmm. I'll be watching TV. You had you was in. Mm -hmm. in his but that's studio. what I'm. But that's what my point is. My point is, is that if it wasn't done in love, it would be resentment. Oh, yeah. And we've never brought up those situations. Like, when you were studying, you ignored me, and you well, blah, we blah, blah. we don't do that because I knew why you needed to get mm -hmm. there. Like, I couldn't study for it because I'm studying and trying to get this over here. You're getting this over here. Ultimately, that's going to be able to create RMJ Financial Services. 
And this is going to create the stability on my nine to four, my, mm -hmm. my job mm -hmm. that I only got to go to work twice a week at. This provides stability for me there. Mm -hmm. So that's why we did it. Like, I can't hold any of that over your head because everything we do is for the betterment of this house. That's what my point is. Mm -hmm. My point is, is that both people have to have that thought process. Right, but they didn't get to that. Yes. Look how long it took us to get to that. Think about it. How long we know each other? I, I don't agree with the us. <laughs> I don't agree with the us. There's no. I, I don't agree. I, I, I there's just don't. No, I know you. I don't. I don't agree with there's how I, long it took the us to get to that point, because um, I know for a fact, and you can sit here and act like it's not the truth, but I know for a fact, ten years ago, if I was studying for the life insurance exam, you would have went out. You wouldn't have been sitting here with me. Oh, you would have been yeah, out in the street. You, you grow and mature. No, but I, but not but no, no. Listen to what I'm saying, but. When you were studying for to be a fireman and doing in, in a training academy and all that stuff, I, I, it was never a thought for me to be out in the streets. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I say I don't agree with the us. I think that that was a that was a space for you to grow mature. <coughs> well, I, yeah. Well, you know, I'm not a out in the streets guy no more. I'm, I actually like being in the house. Yeah, I'm that's what I'm saying. I feel like that yeah, was a space now. for you to grow. Yeah, grow yeah in. you're right. I, I yeah. give you that. I give you that. Yeah, and I appreciate you growing in that space. Being in the house? No, I appreciate you growing in a space of not looking at me studying to better myself as you being neglected. And then saying, since you're neglected, then I got to go out here and do something stupid. Instead, you was like, no, I'm not being neglected. She's studying for a purpose, and the purpose is going to benefit our life. And benefit our household so i'm gonna honor her in this space i'm gonna cook and i'm gonna do this i'm gonna make sure she's situated i'll make sure when she does finish up i'm gonna have a glass of wine for her. like you honored me in that space and like i said 10 years ago it would not have been no honor so i'm saying thank you because i see for i see that there there has been a lot of growth with you because i know i know i probably wouldn't even i probably wouldn't even took the test because I'd have been so stressed out about all the other things going on in our life that I would have just been like, fuck it, I'm not taking this test because it's too much of a distraction. You know what I mean? So thank you. Mm. You're welcome, I guess. I'm just being a regular man. Take the thanks. Take the thanks. You're welcome. You've matured. And it's okay to acknowledge. Can we drink to that? I know you keep trying to sh get me to click these glasses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think the takeaway um, of this is that in order for this relationship to work. <laughs> yeah, how does it going to work? These niggas need therapy. Like a motherfucker. <laughs> um, That's the only way we work. Listen. For real. No, for real. That's the only way we work. For real. Like, we wouldn't have been here this second round of... Mm -mm. Nah. Nah. Not without uh, Miss Diane. The Lotus Wellness Group. Yeah. It wouldn't have happened because um, I was too hurt and living as a victim. And you, you were oh, just still Daniel. It was like I made, I made, I made changes and like, what more do I need to do? And it was like both of us realized because of therapy that um, we both needed to make more changes. I mean, we got the same problems, but we just fight them a little different, I guess. The shit don't change. That's why. This. That's why with this, a lot of people are like this is a toxic relationship. They should be done with each other. No, nope. they got more passion than most motherfuckers that are in quote unquote stable marriages. Mm -hmm. And the passion comes Definitely from Definitely not a boring moment. <laughs> nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, I don't think that I don't think that um we are still the same people. I do think that the main point, like you said, is that we figure out a different way to uh we've got we've gone from arguing to discussing. Yeah. To discussions. 
Right. So, like, therapy helps you learn how to communicate those mm-hmm. ha- and change them arguments where you fucking throwing darts to discuss. Discuss. Mm-hmm. That's how ter- therapy changed for mm-hmm. for me personally yeah. for both of us. Yeah. We don't no longer throw darts. Yeah. But this those same issues are there, but mm-hmm. we learn how to talk about those issues because the flaws are not meant to hurt you anymore. Mm-hmm. The flaws are there, but we have to get past where we are right now. And I think that's what therapy is. It just teaches you how to communicate through that shit. It does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because arguments is like a war. Especially with two passionate people. Yeah, arguments is a war, and a discussion is like a peace treaty. You're sitting down and coming up with an agreement. It's not always a peace treaty, though. Sometimes it's just let's respect each other's differences. That's normally what peace treaties are. Yeah, it don't mean we agree. Yeah. I think that's you just the... Leave you know me what? Here. You know what? I'm going to leave you here, and we're going to peacefully exist in this moment. I think that's what where a lot of people get it wrong. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are trying to... Um, Win. Yeah. And I think what therapy does is like, look, this is how you view it. Mm-hmm. This is how I view it. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying you wrong. Mm-hmm. That don't mean I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. But like... Sometimes we just gonna have to agree to dis a fucking agree. Mm-hmm. You don't have to. Agree. And then, but there are moments when people are just <laughs> fucking wrong. There are moments yeah. when people are just fucking wrong. Yeah. But the but the majority of the time, there are moments where it's just you need to discuss it a little bit better. Um, really deal with the issue, not with everything else. And then a lot with the arguments brings up your pain bodies. And all the shit that you've gone through in your childhood. And it's like everything gets related to that one moment. Like, that's what he did. That's what Malcolm did in the movie. She was talking about the thank you. And this nigga went to when she was cheating. He went to, he went everywhere in the world instead of dealing with that one topic, which was the thank you. Thank you. And that's normally how arguments just get worse and worse. Because instead of dealing with making it a singular focus, a singular conversation. Mm-hmm. We say, and then rem- you also did this last week. And then remember two months ago, and it's like, but we talking about right here. Yeah. This moment. I don't know what I'm saying. We talking about practice, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so. For a joke, I guess. Yeah, you're right. But nah, I thought it was a good movie. I thought it was, I thought it was definitely too. worth watching. It, yeah. Especially like, you yeah. know, it's a lot of people that was mad about it and yeah. made it a race thing. I think all fucking couples go through this shit. I think the only thing about the movie that was a race thing when he was just talking about his role as a black director. In Hollywood. But yeah. outside of that, it as was, a relationship. That shit is everybody. That shit ain't got shit to do with race. Nah, it don't. It don't. You, I don't care if a white man wrote it. Yes. And fucking Chinese people in there. Yes. Like, that shit was a well-written movie. I'm going to tell you how you know it was real written. Mm-hmm. Well, well written. <laughs> R- well written. Uh-huh. We watched two actors mm-hmm. for an entire movie. My nigga. They, Lil Denzel and Zendaya. <gasps> Lil Denzel. When he was outside <laughs> screaming, I was Lil like, Denzel. look at this. Look at you, I get like your daddy. Look at you. Look at you. 24 hour lockdown. <laughs> That's exactly what he looked like. King Kong. And he's got, got nothing, nothing on me. me. <laughs> That's exactly what he looked like. That's yeah. exactly what he looked like. But um, but yeah, you absolutely correct. And at the end of the day, if that was a white man that wrote that movie, he did a good fucking job. I think yo. that's a black friend. I did not know. Like I, he did an awesome job. That I didn't is. once feel like who the fuck says this? I would have thought I never, Spike Lee did that nigga, shit. Nigga, for real. I would have <laughs> never thought, like, it, you know, sometimes you could tell when somebody is trying and to write music a, was good, too. Soundtrack, That though? soundtrack was like What's that. the song that it ended on? That's your song. Oh, the outcast. The joint I start my run to. It's a fine time between love and hate. See, pain way too much, but baby, I'm on it. I love that song. That yeah. was good. That was because it's the truth. It is a fine line between love and hate. Yeah. It really, really is. It is. But I would recommend that movie to every couple, mm-hmm. whether you're in a good place or a bad place, because mm-hmm. you might see yourself in not just looking at yourself as the male, 
but not just all men think like the men or all women think like that women because that woman that woman mm -hmm. because some of her I saw in myself yeah just like some of him I saw in myself. myself yeah I saw myself in both of them me too because I what he was doing he was just throwing shots because he wanted her feelings to be hurt because he was mad about her day being ruined and I know I've thrown shots I'm like yeah. oh I'm about to hurt you shots Psh. <laughs> and I'll be like Matrix. Nigga, you don't be like Matrix. Your ass be like, Matrix shot me yeah. again. <laughs> you be breaking out the bazooka. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gonna shoot me that little ass man? How about a Tommy gun? A Tommy gun. You got it. <laughs> it was perfect. It was perfect. It was perfect. That's such an inside joke. <laughs> I'm telling you Oh my god How long has it been Since you Oh my I'm god I'm writing that joke You did it <laughs> You did it I'm writing that I'm joke I'm so Oh my god I'm I did writing. not think you was going to be able to throw that shit in there You did it You amaze me every time Give me a kiss mm. Mm. Let's take a break and then we go come back with the Black Panther joint. I gotta refill this cup. Okay. Got that fucking my That's something. Okay, so next up is movie we watched last night. We did not finish watching this joint until one o'clock in the morning. You didn't finish watching it at First all. First of all, stop talking to me disrespectfully. <laughs> you fell asleep. I, I watched the movie. You did. I missed like probably you 10 minutes. You missed the last 10 minutes, which yeah. is the most important part. Of the but movie. no, it wasn't the most important part because I woke up and I saw what happened mm -hmm. and I read, was able to read the ending as well. So it was like, it was probably like seven minutes yeah. that I missed. Yeah, man. It was about the life of Fred Hampton. Yeah. The Black Panther Party in mm -hmm. Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, powerful mm -hmm. movie, I thought it was. And um, mm -hmm. I truly believe that um, I was glad to see that on on on, on picture. I um actually was really glad to see it too because I'm not really um a big fan of like um watching like those kind of black Black History movies. Especially movies that involve a lot of like situations with racism, like slavery. I'm not good at watching those kind of movies. Wow. So, um, um, because it makes me mad. Right. And um, <clears throat> I don't want to then go out into the world as if the first white person that I ran into was the white person in the movie. Right. So it's like I, I just don't I don't like those feelings that come up. Like I understand racism is here. I understand all all that we've gone through, but I just sometimes don't like having those feelings. So you think that they shouldn't depict them at all or they shouldn't show anything? No, I think it is necessary, but I think that some people reach their limit mm -hmm. in what how often they can keep seeing those movies. That's like I it's like I can say the same thing about scary movies. Like I don't watch those either because I don't like those emotions. I don't. I don't want to be scared. Like I don't want to be scared. So out of the all right, well yeah, I got you. Yeah. However, this one was a good. One. This was one you liked. This was really good. Yeah, well, I thought it was interesting to show that side of um, the Black Panther Party mm -hmm. because the different one thing about Fred Hampton was Fred Hampton was um, brilliant in mobilizing. Mm -hmm. and um, organizing mm -hmm. and collecting and putting different groups together mm -hmm. and for and and they didn't fuck around I didn't realize that um I didn't realize that the Black Panthers um worked with gangs yeah I didn't realize that they also worked with um like other like some white supremacist organizations and stuff like that yeah. I didn't realize that because the narrative was so different for this movie compared to other movies that I um, watched while there still was the aspect of 
the white man against the black man the most important thing that i picked up on which is very different which is what i think a lot of people are starting to realize is that the fight is not about race is literally capitalism it's like a rich poor thing classism class nah it's not even that's that's classism okay yeah yeah, yeah upper yeah. class middle class lower class yeah yeah you're yeah, talking yeah. about a class a yeah. class but the thing about it is poor white a lot of a lot of poor whites especially in that time mm-hmm. a lot of poor whites were the ones that were pit against the poor black right and so that's what he did <clears throat> when he walked into um that that meeting with those, said, those yeah. white people you're getting oppressed like, by the same people right. you're getting by. and i was like you're absolutely correct which is why a lot of us had a problem with the way that trump manipulated a lot of the white people in um, the United States where it was like do you not see that he's not for you either <laughs> like he's not for you either he's using you yeah. he don't give a goddamn about you or me yeah. he only cares about the people that are billionaires but he know, he know you guys are so fucking stupid yeah it's so just, stupid you the ones gonna run yeah, the yeah, yeah. meanwhile he closing deals exactly overseas exactly and so um, I remember I was listening to uh, Kev on stage um the other day and i and i sent you the text message that said um the biggest play in cap for capitalism was racism that was the biggest card that was the that was like the joker the big joker Mm -hmm. was racism because if we keep them if we keep them occupied with race they don't realize that actually we need to use them in order for us to be rich Mm. And so they're fighting something that don't have nothing to do with anything because the objective is for us to have more money and them to have less. Michelle Alexander um, wrote the book um, 14th Amendment mm-hmm. or 13th Amendment. Mm-hmm. One of them. Um, and it's about um, mass incarceration. Mm-hmm. And um, in that book, she talks about the Bacon Rebellion. Mm-hmm. And the Bacon Rebellion is real similar to what you just said. Mm-hmm. It was like poor, newly um, free slaves or, or black slaves mm-hmm. and indentured servants mm-hmm. and white indentured servants. Mm-hmm. You 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 have the color to be like the master, mm-hmm. but you just be the overseer over these sharecroppers. That's what Fred Hampton. That's what he said. Mm. That's what he said when he went up to them. He said, "You don't realize you're working for them too." Imagine if we as the slaves man together with y'all. The shit crop. Yep. We could overtake the master. It's only one master. And he controlling all these people. So I seen a um a meme that's always been around for the last couple of years. It's the game of Monopoly. A bunch of fat ass white capitalists mm-hmm. around playing Monopoly and mm-hmm. everything. And on the table is just it's just like five people sitting down like this. Mm-hmm. And they got all this money on the table, mm-hmm. all these hotels, and they smoking cigars, mm-hmm. and they having a good time. And the caption says, if only we knew, we all we had to do was stand up and the game is over. Absolutely correct. And that's why I like this movie. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't feel like it was the typical white versus black. Yeah. I felt like I totally understood why they had to kill him. Mm-hmm. And it was like, this nigga is opening up people's eyes. Yeah. He was standing, where was he standing in front of the, uh, it was it state the cap- capital? The state capital with gang members, white people, women, and black women. Yeah. White women and black women. Powerful at 21. 21? <laughs> they killed a man at 21 years old. That's what I think people didn't pay attention to. Like, that's, that's. To me, what stood out the most, I knew about Fred Hampton, and you know, I had no idea Fred Hampton was twenty-one years old. So. Like I didn't even like everybody talk about how Nipsey Nipsey was thirty-three, Tupac was twenty-five, Fred Hampton was twenty-one years old. So that statement, young and dumb, we have to stop saying it. Gotta. We gotta, we gotta stop gotta. saying it because it's a choice to be dumb. It's, it's a choice because it's a lot of old and dumb motherfuckers running around right now. Nigga. And it's by choice. Nigga. Because 21 years old. That's a young God. That's a young prophet. That That's shit, a young king that they that, killed. That, I, think, I think when I read that at the end of the movie, that's what really 
that that hit hard. So Bob Marley has a line. He says, "How long will they kill our prophets? Why we stand aside and look? Mm -hmm. How long will they kill our prophets?" Mm -hmm. That young man would have probably never called himself a prophet. Mm -hmm. But that young man had the spirit of what a real prophet looks like mm -hmm. in real time. And um, prophets always get killed because mm -hmm. they are here to disrupt the system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're here to cause a disruption. Mm -hmm. They are called to disrupt. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, for whoever they're here for. One of the points that um, I like that started the opening of the movie that held me, and that's why I was like, oh, this is about to be something else, was when he said, war is politics with bloodshed. Politics is war without bloodshed. Say that again. War, war is politics with bloodshed. Politics is, blood, is war without bloodshed. Yep. That makes sense total fucking sense when you really think about it when you think about what we just went through during yeah. this election <laughs> the the country is and was at war at war over politics hmm. how fitting right <laughs> i was like my nigga if this isn't the truth that's why I don't get involved in that shit, young. Politics. I don't, I don't give a goddamn. Anybody, people can be mad. Whatever. You know. Cancel me. Even though I haven't even been. No <laughs> yeah, you say cancel me. But like. Hey, cancel me. I, 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 I just don't even. I don't. I just don't get involved in, in that stuff. Because it's like. It, it causes too much of, the, of a divide. Yeah. It. Um, it. It. I, it's like I don't ever see on either side where they're promoting peace yeah. and the betterment of people. Yeah. Um, I don't trust either side. Mm -hmm. Remember, right wing, left wing, same fucking bird. 100%. Same fucking bird. <laughs> we act like we talking about, like, how much, how, how, how more, I guess, sometimes in the way that they say stuff to us, how do we not understand that they're playing a game with us? Yo, yo. Red, red and blue. Look at the flag. It's still on the flag, though. Ooh. The red and blue on the fucking flag, y'all. In your face. What are we not understanding? It's a game. That these motherfuckers is working all of them work together and they all get us all riled up and guess what they meet up at the hamptons and have fucking orgy parties i guess I Epstein mean, and motherfuckers all <laughs> listen trash you hear me <laughs> you know, a bunch of trash and China, you got Epstein and trump and bill clinton and all and them they was underage girls yeah. at least ti and tiny's women were um of age yeah, they just was having fucking fun yeah it was, it was literally um a swingers party like i don't <laughs> understand how like I, I i'm really trying to understand if you were at the door uh -huh. and they said listen it's gonna be titties and ass everywhere. <laughs> red pill or the blue pill, bitch. <laughs> and you gonna have to take this pill before you even walk in the door. You want the red or the blue? Because we want you loose. Okay. You took the pill willingly. Walked in. And did what got you do? fucked and then left, and now it's a. I don't. I don't understand. Mm. I really don't. I, I'm really. I'm really having a hard time understanding. Um. What. What. I guess the basis of um the lawsuit. I mean, were you held captive there for over a week? Like, you know, did you think you were only going to be there for a day and it ended up being like seven days and you're like, okay, like I'm done having sex? Like, you know, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. But if it was a night mm -hmm. and you knew at the door mm -hmm. that this is what is going to happen, <laughs> it's not like they let people in and then 
started fucking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was like, nah, you can't even come in here unless you take the pill and be like, you good with what's going on. That's like Harvey Weinstein. I'm calling you at 2.30 in the morning to come audition for a fucking movie. So, Harvey Weinstein, <laughs> that situation actually reminds me of this character here, uh, William. Oh. Judas. Man. Judas. Uh, self-preservation. Okay. Um. Let's get back to the movie. Just, so, going back to the black, um, this movie, Judas and the Black Messiah, I couldn't believe that he was so easily, um, so easily convinced. To be an FBI informant? Yes. Yeah, like, you're not, you were a fucking street thug. And how were you that impressed by the FBI? Because he said five years. So jail time caused you to be an informant, and then it led to you actually setting this man up and drugging him. And then they kept, they, they, uh. Yeah. They had FBI informants in the gangs in the other Black Panther sets killing each other and getting acquitted because they were FBI informants. That's dirty, man. It's like, um... That's why people don't like snitches from that angle because those were they snitched and were real political prisoners, real poli real heroes. It ain't about these dumbass niggas that be getting locked up. Something about my man snitched on me, nigga. Y'all both was dumb nut ass mm -hmm. niggas doing dumb nut ass shit. Mm -hmm. I've been there. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I never been around. No, I, I feel like that's a little bit different. I yeah, think but that what I'm talking about with this yeah. level of snitching, you're killing the whole movement. Yeah. It's bigger than you. Yeah. This don't yeah. got nothing to do with you or Fred Hampton. This shit is 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 going to change the lives of all kinds of people. That is yeah. the dirtiest rat. I'm not. Yeah. That shit we always horrible. talk about rats for for drug dealers yeah. and all that shit. Like these fucking rats that took down the Black Panther Party yeah. are scum of the fucking earth. The rats that sat around Malcolm X. The rats that sat around Elijah Muhammad, the rats that sat around those, that's the lowest level of just rat that you can be. That's not, I don't fuck Takashi, you know, all this dumbass. Why shit. is it always someone in the, like, in the circle? Like, it's always. Why is there always a Judas in every circle? That's it's no different than Caesar, Julius Caesar, Caesar, and who was the guy that killed him? It was his best friend too. Mm -hmm. That was a move, that was a tale from back in the day. It's always well, what is he has that? to be close enough to you to kiss you on your cheek. Close enough to kiss you on your cheek. I guess that goes back to Malcolm and Marie, where there's a thin line between love and hate. It's just it's actually you know what I'm it's saying. It's actually scary. It is. When you when you say, why do the greats always have a Judas in their circle? That's why, you know what, whatever we do, I pray that no one feels that they have to kill our movement. Because it's not nothing worth killing. Mm. Just want to spread love and, and build and make relationships. With I mean, happy. but that is worth killing because the system doesn't work, want love. You cannot rule a people that are in love with each other. Because love is the strongest frequency. Yes. So you have to continuously create chaos in order for you to have something to rule over because if there's no if there's peace why do i need a ruler people ask for soul and they said the other nations uh-huh the other nations the have kings. other nations have kings. we want to be like the other nations and they said but the king can take your wife and lay with her the king takes the first of your fucking um livestock you pay taxes to a king. God is your king. It's crazy. Zinyame. That's why um, I, I just don't follow with the politics because at the end of the day, They're not I got to figure this shit out regardless of who's in office. I got to figure it out for myself. And I, nobody's going to tell me what it is that 
No, I'm I'm gonna listen to your rules that you put in place when you get there. Pay Caesar's taxes and go yeah. about your fucking business. And I'm gonna figure it out from there. Right. To have your emotion tied up in this shit. But see, this is a different thing back then, though. Like, that's how I feel today. But then the police was like beating them up and shit. The police was literally just killing niggas. Like, it was war on black people. And I mean, it still is, though. It has so change. why do you think, why do you think, though, okay, yeah, so, like, what's up with that? Niggas are still getting killed by police. Do you think we need a resurgence of a Black Panther Party? Is it necessary today? I think, I think it's, I, I, I look at it like this. Mm -hmm. um, how can I say this? Um, I feel like there's a lot of instigators out here. Mm. A lot of people talking about what should be happening, what needs to be happening, and there's not enough people about that action. I feel like um, if you're not going to do anything or lay your life on the line, to uh, stop the system then essentially shut the fuck up. Mm. That's that's what I feel. Find your role in this. But so, rather so, than that, I don't so, have time for your complaints. Mm -hmm. I don't have time for your bullshit ass comments on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> you're a fucking revolutionary on the fucking social media. Like I don't have time for, for that. I, I don't like a lot of talking. Mm -hmm. I'd rather people be about about be be about it. About that action. Be about it. And so um I think if someone feels the need to be about it, be about it. Hundred percent. Um and my I feel like if the Black Panthers all stood in the way that um Fred ha Fred ha ha Hampton Mm -hmm. stood um, with what he stood on which wasn't just about blackness but it was about the oppression of all people due to capitalism then yeah cause that's the real fight mm -hmm. it ain't about color cause all white people ain't bad because the person that got him killed was a fucking black person that's always the case so it's it's not that it's not so it's, it's not a it's not a kinfolk. yeah it's not a black or white thing and so that's what i'm waiting for i'm waiting like i just i don't know like i just I, I just don't like talking about shit too much and so for me and this is the truth about me the reason why i don't really get caught up in all of this stuff because i'm gonna be the woman in the window shooting and, 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 I, and, and the truth I will be Harriet Tubman and I'll be shooting niggas that's in my way of me following through with the movement so I don't get involved in it because you're gonna be real I, I, I don't do it because I don't get involved in it because I don't even think the world is oh is I don't think the world is um alive enough to even understand that kind of passion so no i you have to find another way to fight the war and it's not through that social media shit. it's about making sure my daughters are straight it's about making sure that i know how to move no matter where i am mm -hmm. whatever situation is put towards me i'm gonna have to figure this shit out period mm -hmm. i want my daughters to know how to figure stuff out i want them to know how to fucking pivot i want them to understand what's going on but hey, it starts with yourself and your family yeah that's why that's the movement that's, that's why, the new movement that's why that's what this is about mm -hmm. when you said everyone has to play their part mm -hmm. that's our role mm -hmm. we don't have to everybody be like oh you're not doing nothing you're not grabbing these goddamn kids in the inner city or whatever no that's not my role that's mm -hmm. your role that's not my mission mm -hmm. God told me to shore up the families mm -hmm. and them kids will be touched indirectly because their goddamn mother mm -hmm. and fathers will be together mm -hmm. And they'll care. Yeah. And they'll have guidance. Yeah. So you got to start with the family. No, start with yourself. yourself. Then you go to your mm -hmm. family. That's what our role is. And that's what I love. 
and I know my purpose, my passion, and this is divinity. And um, thank you for this weekend of Valentine mm -hmm. that we don't ever celebrate. Mm -hmm. Thank you for um, make, giving me company and watching these two movies. I know, right? And thank you for the last, especially four years, three years. <laughs> Yeah. You're welcome, baby. <laughs> Love you, baby. Love you more. And this has been another episode of Wind Down. And we are about to finish up our drinks mm -hmm. and wind down. Wind down. <laughs> Peace.